stoichiometry. Don't let that word scare you. It's it's some math. That shouldn't scare you either. So before we get started, let's get everything you need. Um, your packets, obviously, periodic table, and a calculator. Because as we're wor working these problems, I want you also checking them on your calculator. So sometimes if you need to pause me, you can do that. And you're checking it yourself so you can see where I'm getting my answers. Okay, so at the top, I hopefully everybody was doing the molar masses, and we will check that. Remember, molar mass is the mass of one mole. And what are you doing at the top? So molar mass, the mass of one mole. Remember, you're using the periodic table. So let's say if you had lead, use the periodic table. What is it? 207. I don't have my periodic table right in front of me. Um, I know it's 207.2 something. We're going to use it to two decimal places. So you find what that other decimal place is. And remember our units, grams per mole. That's all it was. Nitrogen and two, you take your two nitrogen, so 14. Point what is it? 007, sorry, I apologize for that, times 2. And so it would be 28.01 is typically what we use, grams per mole. So that's what you need to finish at the top there. Okay, so I'm halfway down, stoichiometry. And it's math. It's just, it's the real part. You've been balancing equations, and now we're going to say, okay, yay, if I give you 10 grams of hydrogen, how much water can you make? So we have to look at the mass relationships. So let's use a little analogy. It's a recipe. Remember a chemical reaction, a balanced chemical reaction is a relationship. So if we're going to make a bacon double cheeseburger, here's your basic recipe. One hamburger bun, two hamburger patties, two slices of cheese, four strips of bacon. This is obviously not good for my diet. So if you have five bacon double cheeseburgers, well you know that you have to keep all of these in the same ratio. So if you make five bacon double cheeseburgers, it's going to take five hamburger buns, ten hamburger slices, two slices of cheese, and four strips of bacon. Excuse me. Five is going to be 10, and then you're going to have 20 strips of bacon because you have to keep everything in the same proportions. Same thing when we make our um, balanced equation. So what kind of happens is you're going to say, okay, but let's say I have, um, let's say, 16. What if I have 16 strips of bacon? how much slices of cheese will I need? Well, I could set up a ratio and say, well, for every four strips of bacon, I need two slices of cheese. So you can see that you need half the amount because it's a two to four ratio. So you may need half the amount and that'd be 18. And I'm sure most of you are going, uh, yeah, I could see that in my head. I know you could. This is the new part that we're going to be using from our balanced equation. It came from my balanced, from my recipe. This comes from our balanced equation. So the new word for that is a mole ratio. So a mole ratio is the conversion factor and it comes from the balanced equation. Now, key things, look at here. It's the moles, and it has to be from a balanced equation. Now, what I want you also to write, what you want goes on top, what you have goes on the bottom. So, here is a balanced equation. And there's a lot of possible mole ratios I could have in this. So I would have my mole ratio like this. So let's say that I'm asking you, how much nitrogen does it take if I have three moles of hydrogen? Well, here's your ratio. I know I need one mole of, I need one mole of nitrogen for every three moles of hydrogen. Well, I would flip it if the question asked me, how much hydrogen do I need if I give you 15 moles of nitrogen? Well, from this, I can see I need three times the amount of hydrogen as nitrogen. We can use any two things and compare. So this is the new step that we're adding, is that mole ratio. So if I want ammonia, this is ammonia. Okay, this is ammonia. Not ammonium, ammonia. Just for a heads up, this is like one of my very favorite equations ever. Favorite, favorite, I would know this equation because there's diatomics and ammonia and at different mole ratios. I like this equation. So 
Look at it for ammonia. If it gives, if it says, how much ammonia will I make? So I'm trying to calculate. I want to find out ammonia. It gave me hydrogen. Well, that's a 2 to 3 ratio. So whatever my number was, I would times it by 2 divided by 3. We're still going our dimensional analysis. Okay, when you're doing any calculation, you are calculating the theoretical yield. Okay, we're going to start using this more um, next towards the middle of the week, but just know any number that you calculate, you're saying, in theory, if 100% of this reacts, this is how much I would need, or, or if you're going to a product, this is how much you would get. This is a theoretical yield, how much you would produce. Okay, there's a couple blanks there. When, how do I do this? Well, we need a recipe. Remember, our recipe comes from a balanced chemical reaction. So there's your two blanks. A balanced chemical reaction is needed. Balanced chemical reaction. Balanced chemical reaction. First step, balance your reaction. Okay, so, okay, so we're going to start easy and kind of build our way up. First one would be just called if I mold mole. And what I'm talking about when I'm looking at these different ones is what am I given? So if we're, look at right here. I'm starting with moles and what did it ask me for? Moles. Okay, let's kind of look at our five steps again. Remember step one, what do you want? So reading this problem, what does it want? I want to know moles of potassium carbonate. So I want moles of potassium carbonate. Okay, what did this problem give me? Well, it gave me this value, this is what I know, that I have 15 moles of CO2. Okay, third step, what do I have that's going to answer that question? That comes from your balanced equation. I want to know the mole ratio. So here's my equation, two potassiums, one carbon. Okay, this is already balanced. So what do I know for my balanced equation? And again, what I want goes on top. So I'm looking. Remember, these are all ones. We assume that they're ones. So that's where those numbers come from, the mole ratio. So I know that I will get I need one mole of potassium carbonate for every one mole of your CO2. That's where these are coming from. Your mole ratio comes from your want and your have. So now to start doing the calculations, remember you always put in front what you have, that's your starting, and it's moles of CO2. Okay, no shortcuts. You write down the elements, you write down the compounds, because that's going to tell me, well, CO2 has to go on the bottom and it has to be moles. So one mole of CO2 for every one mole of K2CO3. Well, look at, yes, they're equal, okay? Are they always going to be equal? No, but we start easy. So what do I get? 15 times one, I just know I need the same amounts. 15 moles of CO2. That is your answer. No, it's not. Because look at what happened. This should cancel. 15 moles, and this is why we write it down, so you can double check. And look at, I wanted moles of K2CO3. I have, okay, so this was your step four. Step five, does this make sense? Yes, this makes sense because it's an equal amount, and that sounds like a very reasonable number. So that does make sense. Okay, so let's look at our next problem. Again, how many moles of water? Okay, so that's what I want. I want to know moles of water. What do I have? I have 5.55, no skipping on numbers, and again, it's moles of hydrogen. Okay, this is where do I need? Well, I need it for my balanced equation. So make sure you balance your equation. And so what is my mole ratio? What am I going to use? Well, I want water, so I need my ratio of water. So it's 2 moles of water compared to what? Hydrogen. So find on your hydrogens right here, two moles of hydrogen. So set it up. 5.55 moles of hydrogen. So if I have moles of hydrogen to begin with, moles of hydrogen has to go on the bottom. Remember, just like a dimensional analysis, they have to cancel out. And so your two moles of water go on top. Well, mathematically, hopefully you can see it doesn't change. This is saying you times it by 2, divided by 2, it's still the same ratio. You still have to show this step because this step is showing me converting it from hydrogen to water. You're showing me that the number didn't change, 
but my compound change. So you, no shortcuts. So does this make sense? Well, yes. From my balance I can, equation, I can see that they're equal amounts. So that does make sense. Okay, next one. How many moles of water? Again, going through this process, we might get to a point, you don't always have to write this down, but we're not there yet. So I want, what do I want? Moles of water. How do I know that? The problem told me right here. Moles of water. Okay, when, what do I have? 5.55, and again, it's a mole of oxygen. So, look at the ratio. Look at your balanced equation. Oop, so, balanced equation, this is my third, this is part of my, what I have to help me solve this problem is your balanced equation. And then, so water, so it is two moles of water. But notice this time, it's, I have oxygen. So my oxygen is what has to go on the bottom. Remember, this is a one. So oxygen goes on the bottom because that's what I have been given. So your mole ratio has changed. Okay, start again. What do I have? So this is my step four. Well, you have 5.55 moles of oxygen. I don't take shortcuts. I still write all of these out. I make my AP kids. You write it out. This is just how you do stoichiometry. You show all your work over one mole of oxygen. So look at this time mathematically, 5.55 times two. Three significant figures, so I'm going to have three significant figures. These numbers will never limit you. So three significant figures, 11.1 .1 moles of water. And it's a double check. Does that make sense? I wanted water. I ended up with moles of water. That seems reasonable. The t double amount seems reasonable. Okay, you do number four. We'll check on that on um, when we look at it on Monday. You can do number four. Okay, so let's look, turn the page. What if it's not always mole to mole? Because the rea reality is moles aren't very convenient. We have to have them. We need them. We need them. But they're really hard to measure in the lab. So we need to look at other things. And what do we measure in the lab? Grams. So all that we're going to do is we start building, you're just going to add one more step to your dimensional analysis. We're still going to go through the same process. So I'm at the top of page three. Six moles of magnesium reacts with excess oxygen in its synthesis. What mass of grams reacted? Notice the difference. This time it's asking for a mass. It's giving you a mole. So I want to have I want grams of oxygen. What did it give me? Well, I have six moles of magnesium. What do I have to help me solve this problem? Well, I have a balanced equation once I balance it. And then I need to know this ratio. So moles of magnesium to oxygen, because first I'm going to have to go from moles to moles. No shortcut. I can only go from moles to moles. So what do I know from my balance equation? That there's one mole of oxygen for every two moles of magnesium. OK, cool. That gets me to moles. But this problem didn't just ask for moles. We're going to have to do now, once we get moles, we're going to have to convert from moles to grams. What do I know? Well, one mole of oxygen is 32, I'm going to go to two decimal places, grams. Because remember, this is the molar mass. Where did this come from? Molar mass. This came from the periodic table. That's why we were practicing that on the beginning. So now I can use all of this to set it up. And again, we'll just start adding another step to dimensional analysis. So you're still going to start 6 moles magnesium. So I have magnesium on top, so magnesium has to go on the bottom. So 2 moles of magnesium for every 1 mole of oxygen. But then it asks for grams, so I have to now take these gram moles and I'm going to convert them to grams, and that's where my second conversion came in. So on the calculator, you take 6 divided by 2 times 32. Hopefully you guys can see this in your head. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 32. This does give me 96 grams of oxygen. Does that number make sense? Yes, that does seem very reasonable to me. 96 grams seems like a fairly reasonable amount.
one more time. Same thing, as we kind of go through it. And the more we do these, the more you, they kind of make sense to you. So, read the question. How many grams of sodium chloride? Why don't you pause me and then start it back up. Try it on your own. When you have this. So, what do I want? Grams sodium chloride. I'm not going to talk as much. I want you working them. Okay, what do I have? Go through what you have. Except now you're probably just turning on Pandora. These words mean so much. They mean a lot to me because they tell me how many steps I have to do on my problems. Because if I see a gram to mole, that's telling me I can't do it in one step. If it's a mole to mole, one step. Gram to mole, two steps. Hmm, are we seeing where this is leading to us? Okay, what do I have to help? So I want sodium chloride. So that means to help me, I'm going to have to balance to my equation because you have to have a balanced equation. So what do I know? Well, two moles of sodium chloride, chloride for every one mole of chlorine. I know that one fact. And then what else do I know? Well, I know that the molar mass of sodium chloride, add it up. Take sodium, 22.99, plus chlorine, 35.45. One mole of sodium chloride, I'm going to write this down because I'm going to probably run off the screen, was 58.44 grams. So now I can solve it. 1.33 moles of chlorine. That's what I have. So for every two moles of sodium chloride, I will get out you need one mole of chlorine. But it didn't ask for, mo for moles. It said, okay, moles are nice, but I have to measure them on a scale, so I need to know how many grams I should be expected to be getting out. Can you see where labs are going to be leading to this? So now, just take your calculator. 1.33 times 2 times your 58.54. And how many significant figures? You can have three significant figures. So you would have 155 grams of sodium chloride. You would expect, this is again, what is this you just calculated? This is your theoretical yield. How much you should, in theory, get out of that reaction. Okay, that's where we're going to stop. But I want you to do something. Look at number seven. Give it a shot. Look at it. You predict. How do you think you're going to solve that? And then we can look at it, and we have so you, that way you can have some questions. But I want to see how many of you can figure that out on your own using as use the front page of the cover as a guide, and just kind of using what we've done, and you problem solve it out. We will.